Hi, I am John Swenson. I manage the Arkansas Food Innovation Center. We're part of the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture, located in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I'm here today to discuss how you go about obtaining your food manufacturing permit in the state of Arkansas. It's possible it could be applicable to another state, but you need to check with your local health department. So the first thing you would do is schedule a meeting with myself or the facility manager of the a facility you're going to, uh, and we're going to discuss your recipe, how you want to package, potentially how you want to market it, um, and look at do you have allergens in your product, think about equipment choices we could come up with, and you would start a, a paper binder of all the paperwork you'll have to be doing. The first thing we would do is prepare a test batch. So you would come into our kitchen, make it just like you would at home. And what we're looking for is particle size of your product, how you make it, how long you cook it, is this product safe? And then we would make you weigh all your ingredients. We don't do anything by volume. Everything must be weighed and everything must be done in a metric system. Um, and eventually you will want a nutrition's facts panel, so this will be helpful in determining that. After that, we will do a product scale up. Here, we've predetermined that you're gonna use certain equipment, we would train you on this equipment, show you how to sanitize that equipment. And typically, when we do like a sauce, we do about 10 gallons, and the primary purpose of this is, does it turn out like it did in your test batch? Are the particles the same size? Does it taste the same? Not everything scales up in a linear fashion. And if we need to, we would re revise your ingredient list and remake that scale up batch. So the first thing you would need to do is look at your, what's called GMPs, good manufacturing practices. These are identified by the state you're in and also by the federal government. And this is typically something you wanna see how you sanitize things, what is your product all about? And the example I always give is ketchup. Ketchup has what's called a standard of identity by the FDA, and it has to have a certain viscosity. And if it doesn't have that viscosity, you can't call it ketchup. I mean, it's as easy as that. And it's mainly because people in the past have cheated. Uh, the next thing you'll do is you'll start writing what's called standard operating procedures, SOPs. So basically what these are is if you were to provide an SOP to myself with all your ingredients and packaging, I could read it and mimic your product, make it, bottle it, walk out the door. And it has to be that detail. This is what the state requires. So here I have an example of what we call a simple SOP for plain yogurt. If you look at the, uh, the list here, you've got some ingredients, milk and a stabilizer. It asks you to standardize the mix, pasteurize it, homogenize it, mix it, package it, incubate it, blast chill it. So the question here is, could you make this yogurt? And the answer is no. I mean, nobody here would know how to do this. Um, there's just not enough information available. Plus, there's no sanitation steps at all. We don't know how, what we're doing. So here's an example of a accurate, well thought out uh, SOP. It starts out, put on a hairnet, wash your hands, put on your gloves, sanitize a table, sanitize buckets, machines. Um, you're gonna basically wash your vegetables. You're gonna transfer vegetables to a bucket. You're going to take them through a machine that's gonna reduce the size of them. And this goes on and on and on and on. So ideally you want this A for the health department, but also let's say you start growing and you hire an employee, this is your best vehicle to train that person. So the next thing you have to come up with is what's called sanitation standard operating procedures or SSOPs. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to come to our facility, we've already done these for you. But in essence, it's you have to define how you're gonna sanitize everything you use in that facility. So it could be the machines, it could be basically the um, tables, your any of your equipment you're using. Um, what we've found is if you're not scrubbing a, a, a surface, you're not removing what's called a biofilm, and that's where a lot of these pathogens can reside, and we've done a lot of tests to prove this. Okay, next you have, to, you have to write up a recall and an allergen plan. So recall plan is, you know, let's say somebody gets sick. I mean, you need to go out to the community, 
and tell everybody this is a recall. You got to go to all those stores that you've sold this product to and recall that product. Um, it is wise to do what we call a mock recall. So let's say you're six months into your business, you pick a random lot number that you produced, say, a month ago, and you go back and see if you can actually determine where you sold this product. So it's important to have a, a database or spreadsheet or something to that effect that you can track this information. Also an allergen plan. So typically, unless you're gonna have your own facility and you're gonna work in a place like our facility, it's shared use. So there are potentially allergens in that facility. Uh, we, we limit areas for allergen use, so it, it's, it's, you won't have airborne issues, but the person prior to you may have used soy sauce in one of the kettles. And if they didn't properly clean, um, it's up to you to make sure you clean that. So you have to define those type of things in your allergen plan. Uh, next, you have to sign up with the FDA. Uh, this is not very hard, but in essence, they need to know you're, you're manufacturing food. Um, the, the only gotcha on signing up with the FDA is if you're working in a facility like ours, we're, you're the company, we're the facility address. It's, uh, it's a little confusing, um, but we have instructions on how that can be done. Also, if you have what's called acidified food, so typically barbecue sauce, salsas, these are items in which uh, an acid has been added like vinegar, lemon juice, etc. This requires a separate form to be filed with the FDA, and it also requires what's called a process authority certification. And we have a professor within our uh, office that can do these, and it generally will cost you around $200 per product. Uh, the next thing the state requires is the employee training schedule. So this is a very simple one here, but basically all this paperwork you've generated, you need to train your employees on. Um, if you're sick, you're gone, um, they need to take over, they need to be aware of all these, you need to train these employees. So this is just a simple example of how you would have a schedule. Then we have to do a label for your food package. So there are our FDA standards to what your label should have. Generally, if I'm looking at a label straight on, I'm going to see at the top your company name, in the middle of what the product is, and it's something that you know needs to say like Salsa, so I know it's Salsa and not some fancy name that I don't know what it is. Uh, and at the bottom, you have to have the weight or the, uh, the uh, volume of that product. Um, on the right-hand side of your panel, you typically have the nutritional facts panel. You'll have your address you'll have the ingredient statement. So the ingredients could be, let's say, tomatoes, lime, um, soy, water. Below that, you have to write contain soy, because a soy is an allergen. Um, and on the left-hand side of that label, typically is gonna be your barcode and marketing information that you wanna do to uh, have that convey to your uh, customer base. Um, I generally, in my case, review all those. A lot of the software for labeling does not have spell check, so I always definitely go through there and check everybody's, uh, you know, that everything's proper. Uh, everybody that, that manufactures food needs a food liability insurance. Um, we, we, an example of this is a place called Flip Program. They charge $300 a year, um, but this is something you must have. You, you don't want to be sued if somebody uh, gets sick. Finally, you're going to schedule a meeting with the facility manager. And so the idea here is that we go through all your paperwork, make sure it's done correctly before you send it to the state. Uh, and you have that binder available, and we just go through the whole thing. Uh, and then in the case of Arkansas, you're going to go and fill out their application. Uh, the only confusing part of their application is it is set up in a manner that is for a manufacturing facility. So it basically has a, wants you to do a layout of your, your floor plan, where your bathroom is located, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and if, in a case where you'd be working with us, you're basically gonna just put our address in there and they know who we are. You, you, you can omit all those steps, um, but it's not very hard to do. But you'll take that application, you'll include the binder that we've gone through, mail it to, the Department of Health in Little Rock, 
There's an $85 fee to review this plan, and then a, uh, part of that $85 is a $35 permit. So once you get your permit, and the state does deliver those to you by hand, uh, you would schedule with us in the facility. Um, generally, we schedule out about two weeks in advance, and it's basically always done by equipment. Um, we have the flexibility of moving certain equipment around, and we are a small space, so uh, we try to get this done in a manner that is, can facil facilitate the most amount of people. Um, upon arriving, we want to make sure that you understand your SSOPs and that you're uh, cleaning your equipment properly, so we will definitely you know, be keeping an eye on you and make sure you're doing that correctly. Product storage, we are, again, a small facility. We don't have room for storage. Um, we do ask, ask you to have a lot code and expiration date on your product before you leave the facility. And I'll, I'll just mention that you need to discuss storage options with the Department of Health. You cannot store your product at home. Um, they just won't let you. So you need to have a, some kind of setup. Um, and that's something you can discuss with them. So your responsibilities is basically everything. This is your company, your liability. You need to be aware of all that paperwork you filled out. I, will, I would provide you templates, but you need to read it. You need to understand what you got yourself into here. Um, and, and as far as our facilities concerned, we're there to help. We're there to assist. We're there to potentially police. Um, but we are a rental facility. Um, this is all your, your company. And so we expect you to abide by our rules and you know, do things in a safe manner. So other considerations here are, you need to obtain a sales permit in the state of Arkansas. So the, the permit you get from the state for manufacturing, that is just a permit that says, I can manufacture product. Then you need to get this sales permit that says, I can sell this product. Um, and then you would, as part of that sales permit, you would enroll in this what's called ATAP, Arkansas Tax, uh, Taxpayer Access Point. And we're really what that's all about is collecting tax money. Um, and so you understand if you sell directly to a consumer, you need to collect tax. If you sell to a grocery store, they're gonna collect a tax. So you need to have a, again, back to that database I discussed earlier, you need to have it something set up properly so you understand how much tax you're gonna pay the state on this ATAP system, it does calculate your tax based on sales, but you should have that just to make sure that numbers match. Um, also, you should have a business plan. Um, we do see people come in that really don't have an idea of what they're going to do, and that's not a good way to start a business. You need to have a plan in place, uh, goals in place, uh, and you need and you need to be persistent about following that, that business plan, and, and marketing for that matter. Um, some products like, let's say, barbecue sauce, it's a saturated market. How are you going to differentiate yourself from those other companies? And that's a very important step. Uh, finally, trademarks, patents. It's hard to patent food, but I would highly recommend looking at trademarking your company name. I myself was a producer. I was producing for about two and a half years, got into Whole Foods, got into Natural Grocers, uh, quite a few stores, went to trademark my company name, and my lawyer said no. Um, it was a mistake on our part. Um, we had to go back and change everything, and uh, trust me, it was not fun. So I, I highly recommend you look into that. The, there is a website that the U.S. Patent and Trademark that you can just go in there and search it's fairly easy to just go in and, you know, pick parts of your name and search on them and see what pops up. That's all I have to discuss today. Thanks for your time.